Hello everyone and welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. I'm sure much like many of you, uh, the charms of winter have started to wear off and ready for a little bit warmer weather taste of summer. I like living in a place where the seasons change because I appreciate all the seasons and this one's I'm ready for it to be over. I'm ready for the summer. This video is a little masterclass in movement design, both functionality and aesthetics. We're going to be talking about Christopher Ward's SH-21 movement. And what I have are three watches with the SH-21. The order of content in this video is first, I'm going to give a very brief overview on the SH-21. And then I'm going to give just the regular video view front and back of the watches, the three that I have. And then that'll be interspersed with some pictures and technical documents and information about the movement. And then we'll get into a macro view where I'll give you all the really beautiful up close front and back. These are really wonderfully done dials and decorated movements. And you'll, so you get these up close views of the watches. So those are the three things I really want to cover. Introduction, regular view with some technical detail, and then macro view. Regarding upcoming videos and what's in the pipeline, probably very soon will be a video on the Watchy browser. That's what I'm calling it. For those of you out there that use the iOS app Watchy, it exports to a CSV file, and I've created a desktop browser-based interface for viewing your watch collection in full screen. I'm looking forward, there's two different versions of it. Looking forward to showing that to you. Information about Watchy is linked in the description below, so be sure to check that out. I know many of you subscribe to my channel for the dial and the watchmaking videos, and I promise I have more videos coming on that. I'm really just waiting on parts to arrive. I have logos coming, I have cases coming, I have a bunch of parts and stuff already here. I've got a couple new projects that I'm working on. Some are related to 3D printing. I guess so much stuff to show you that's cool. And I promise that that's gonna be happening soon, just waiting on some stuff. So if you're here for the dial and watchmaking stuff, there's more on that coming too. But this is an interesting video because this is also talking about movement design, cases, and uh, you know, just great design from an aesthetic point of view also. So there's a little bit of everything in this video for everyone also. I am wearing one of the SH-21 watches today, the C1 Morgan, which has become one of the darlings in my collection. As of late, I'm wearing it quite a bit. Um, and it's gonna be one of these watches that I show you up close. First, a little background on the SH-21 movement and why I'm showcasing it. One is because I have, one, I have an affinity for Christopher Ward. I think they're really great watches for the money. It's, it's hard to beat the bang for the buck when it comes to Christopher Ward. And I say that because of the quality of materials and manufacture that you're getting for what the price tag is. There are a few other brands that have that sort of differentiation between this is the price you're paying, but the quality far outweighs that price tag. Another one just in a higher tier, much higher tier is Grand Seiko. I love Grand Seiko watches. You, you're paying for your buck there. You just can't beat it. And I think for sort of entry level Swiss made, you know, semi luxury type watches that Christopher Ward is just one of those players in that market that has the price tag at the right point for the quality and, and you're just hard to beat. On top of that, they have a 60-60 warranty. So you get a five-year warranty on these things. And they have sales very often. It's just a good place to get people into watches interested and get some quality watches for a good price. You can't go wrong with that. Just like most watch companies out there when they get started, whether they're micro brands or not, they source their movements from other manufacturers. So Christopher Ward, for example, sourced a lot of movements. If you know they're quartz, then you're getting things like Swiss Ronda movements. If they're mechanical watches, you're talking about things like uh, ETA or Soleta. Now, one of the companies that CW was sourcing movements from fairly early on was an atelier by the name of Synergies Horloger. And Horloger just means watch. So it's like saying watch Synergies. And it's abbreviated SH. And in 2014, CW merged with this uh, atelier. And so also they were working with uh, their master watchmaker, Johannes Janka. And of course, I don't know if it's pronounced Johans or Johannes. You've heard both pronunciations, but he just goes by JJ, apparently. Uh, that's the name that's on the calibers. That So CW has had a line of watches where uh, JJ had developed modules to go on existing movements like ETAs and Solidas and stuff like that. Uh, JJ01 caliber was uh, the jumping hour. JJ02 was uh, the single pusher chronograph. Uh, 03 was the world timer and 04 is the moon phase. And so there were modules that, that this watchmaker JJ developed. And so those are the JJ calibers. Well, uh, JJ was also working uh, with SH 
on this new movement. And so what happened was for the first time in like 50 years, and you can look at all the marketing material, I have all the documentation and links and stuff in the description below, but they came up with their own new movement, the SH21, SH for the abbreviation for the company, and then the 21 for 21st century. So SH21 was born around 2014 or so, and started going to movements. A lot of watch enthusiasts make a big deal about in-house calibers. They're usually more expensive, but a lot of that, you know, the prestige along with that comes from the fact that the company can control the pipeline of movement manufacturer. They're not reliant as much on other manufacturers that may or not be able to source them movements at a pace they want or at a quality level that they want, for example. But if you have your own in-house manufacturing capabilities for movement, then you can do what you want with it. And so CW has found themselves in that position with some really good strategic thinking and some good watchmaking design. And we're going to go in detail now with the SH21 and show you what these beautiful watches look like and talk about the wonderful qualities about this movement. And just to say up front, the three things that really make this movement interesting is that, first of all, it's a power reserve of five days. It's a 120 hour power reserve. Most mechanical watches have a reserve of about 38 to 42 hours. So it's a five day reserve. You set this thing, you can wear something else for a day or two, go back, pick it up, and it's still running. They are all also COSC certified chronometers. So these things are amazing when it comes to timekeeping specification, and they've been certified by COSC. So they're chronometers, they have a massive 120 hour power reserve. Another big thing is that it is a modular design, and that comes with some pros and cons. Modular is going to result in usually a bigger movement, whether that's width or height, but also what it does allow for is easier development for other modules to interact with it for other complications. So for example, if you want to have beyond the, the typical things you would have in a, in a high-end Swiss manufactured movement where you've got, let's say like center seconds, hacking seconds, stuff like that. But if you want date, if you want small seconds at six, you want power reserve, GMT, if you want other complications, but having a modular design allows for creating interfaces for complications in a little bit more straightforward way and just gives the movement a lot of flexibility. So that's just really one of the good things about it. So that's a little background in SH21, but let's get these watches on camera and talk a little bit more technical detail and design. All right, now to the fun part. Although I am a little sad because I had to take this off my wrist for the video and this one arrived a couple weeks ago. Been on my wrist like 80% of the time. This is now my darling in the collection. So me. I'm going to talk about that more in a little bit, but we'll start with the one I got first, which is the Christopher Ward C8 Power Reserve Chronometer. Of course, naming Power Reserve because it's got one of the Power Reserve complications at nine o'clock. This one also has the date and the small second. All three of these are manual. There are some automatic versions of the SH21, but I like the manual wind, particularly those that come with the Power Reserve complication at nine o'clock. Just beautifully done. But the aviation style watch, this was the first one, retails for about $2,000. I picked mine up for much less than that in a nearly new sale. You can see it's got that pilot look about it. They use exhibition case backs usually on their SH21s just to show off those wonderful double barrels holding that 120 hour power reserve, five days. And so this was my first one. And again, beautiful watch. We'll take macro views, we'll look up close. Uh, by the way, didn't mention if you want to get blog post updates or you want to get information notifications, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And also there's going to be a blog post along with this one. I'll link it in the description below. I don't put blog posts with all my videos, but this one, I want to give you lots of pictures. So you want that subscribe here, subscribe on my website, watchcomplications.com, and you can have fun with all the content. So the C8 case is pretty big. This is substantial if you want to know you've got a watch on your wrist. This is 44 millimeter diameter, but it's got a slim profile. It's only 11.3 tall. So the SH21, it's not a very thick movement, but it certainly has got a little bit more width to it. And this is 53 millimeter lug to lug. So again, it's you got to have a little bit of a bigger wrist or like big watches for this. On the leather, this is thick Tiber leather, is about 98 grams. So substantial watch and a little bit of the bigger ones for this movement. The other two are in the C1 dress case. So Christopher Ward starts all of their watch names with the case that it's in. So C8, uh, this is the C1, which is their dress style case. I also really like the C65, which is their 
vintage diver style case, but my favorite case, I think, if I had to pick one of all the Christopher Ward watches is the C1. I think it's just because I tend toward dress style watches. Uh, if it's not a diver, then I prefer to have a dress style watch. This is the C1 small second. Again, what's being shown off here is the small seconds at six, which is my favorite complication, small seconds. And if you've been watching my video series on how it works, where I'm going over how the different complications are implemented, this is one's gonna come up in the future. So small seconds, my favorite. Design-wise, the C8 has a lot of depth and texture to it. We've got the date here. That date's actually loomed itself. We've got the small seconds at 6 and power reserve at 9. So this is, you know, got a lot of depth and texture to it. Applied markers and loom and lots of stuff going on. Black, white, red combo. This is just a crisp, clean opaline dial. Now I move the hands around just so you can get a better sense. It doesn't look so unbalanced most of the time. But this is a great summer watch. Love wearing this over the summer. It doesn't get much wear over the winter. It goes well with you know khakis and shorts and sort of um, plaid button-up shirts. Just great for casual wear lounging over the summer. So this is going to start getting a lot more wrist time as the summer hits again. And just a nice crisp dial. I love the flame blue hands. And the pins of the hands have the contrast with the silver and the blue. And again, sort of amplifying that this simple three hand design with the small seconds taking center stage. So that's the C1. Now, both of these are the C1 case. The C1 case is about 40.5 millimeter diameter. So very wearable, uh, you know, it's in a sweet spot for a lot of people between 40, 41 millimeter. It's a little bit more thickness to it because of the domed crystal, about 12 millimeter high and lug to lug 48 and a half. Again, 48 and a half, lug to lug with a 40 millimeter diameter just feels natural on the wrist the morgan is about 71 grams the small seconds about 68 grams so these c1 watches with the sh21 are about 70 grams give or take whereas you know the strap's gonna be some differentiator between them now this one just like the c8 has the small seconds at six and the power reserve at nine you can also notice that they're not afraid to move their logo around in the name. Notice it's at 12 on the C8, on the small seconds it's at 9, and then on the Morgan it's at 3 o'clock. And that's because the special Morgan series we have the applied Morgan logo at 12 o'clock. This is modeled after the Aero 8 car and just a beautiful design. Again this is just a darling that's just getting all of my wrist time these days. So me, if you could put Brian on a dial, this would be the dial. In terms of the cost of the SH21 watches, they're not cheap for most people because they are an in-house caliber, they've got 120 hour power reserve, varying complications, usually very sophisticated dial design. They're showing off you know, the qualities of the SH21 and it is an in-house caliber. So these aren't their cheaper watches and the power reserve is usually around $2,000 give or take. All of these I picked up in sales, so I got them at a pretty significant discount. But retail on this one is about 2000 I paid again much less than that. The C1 Small Seconds is no longer manufactured. Uh, I picked this up for half off. Originally retails for around 1500 1600 I got it for like around 700 So this is you know, a, it's a really good deal. I love the Small Seconds, favorite complication of mine. And this was just too good to pass up and they're each decorated differently. And that's one of the great things about the SH21 watches. But yeah, so this is about 1900 new, this is about 15, 1600 new. This is 2500 new. Again, I picked it up in a sale and got it for, for a significant discount, but I had another motorsport watch in my collection and it was also around a thousand bucks and I was like, not wearing it at all. It just wasn't me. And I thought, well, you know, I'm saving up for my grail, so if I'm going to pass one along, I'll move another one in. And I wanted a motorsport watch, and this one, again, is just me. It's Brian on a dial. And this is, yeah, yeah, this one is the one. If I had to pick one of these three, this, this, is, this is the one. And these watches each come on different straps. This is a, you know, a thicker uh, Tiber leather. This is a Cordovan strap, and then this is a Picari leather. Again, going with the theme for each of the aviation dress and motorsport. So what makes the SH-21 so special? They often put a lot of energy and time into dial designs with a lot of depth, again, to show off those complications that it can handle. 
and again some modular design. The SH21 will have sometimes varying number of joules based on the complications. Now again, it is every single movement that's an SH21 is a certified cost chronometer, comes with a cost certificate. This one has 31 joules, and you can see the double barrels here. They are hooked up in serial, and I'll talk about that and what that means in a little bit as opposed to parallel. They highly decorate the backs of these. Let me just show you them all real briefly. So that's the C1 Morgan. It's got 31 joules. Here we've got the C1 small second. See, it's decorated just a little bit differently. Okay, a lot of engraving. Christopher Ward usually goes around the balance wheel on their SH-21s. This one's got 27 joules, so we have 31 here, uh, 27. And then this one has 27 as well. And this one, of course, the Aviation Watch has the sort of the twin turbine look on the double barrels. There you go, 27 joules. I don't have this one running right now, and you can see down in here it says SH-21, and then it's got a serialized movement. And that's also information you'll find on the warranty cards when and your cost certificates is the exact movement number for these. Now, every one of these is a cost certified chronometer, so it operates it within certain specs. That's one of the special things about it. And I said it's a modular movement, so they get these different complications and things they can implement with it. But what I want to talk specifically about technically, and we're going to shift to some documentation, some pictures and stuff, is I want to talk about the gear train. We're going to talk about how these barrels are implemented and hooked up to each other, and then also how that translates to the implementations for like sensor seconds, small seconds, and that would then translate to other complications on the movement. You'll notice, now if you have one of these SH-21s, you notice a couple of things about it. So if you have one of these, don't freak out if you see the way this thing operates little things that seem a little bit weird or different than other movements. One is that when you charge it, you'll notice that the barrel and the crown will bounce back a little bit. There's a lot of tension in the springs here. It's a lot of power. And so people sometimes worry. It's like, my SH-21 has a little bit of bounce back. That's pretty normal behavior for the SH-21. And again, it's just a lot of power. Big main springs. And something else, when you charge the power reserve, don't expect that these barrels are going to turn at the same rate. They don't. The first barrel is going to get the main charge, and then you'll see that this gear connecting them, it's going to do what looks like a little bit of slipping, and you can kind of see it there, and it's transferring power to the second mainspring barrel as well. Now, really, I think of it almost like electrically. I guess that's the way my mind thinks a little bit more, at least than mechanically. The second barrel is almost like a capacitor. It's there to keep things consistent in terms of supplying power so that if the first mainspring uh, barrel slips or does anything weird, it's, it's there to pick up the slack. At least that's how it sort of, that's how I think about it. But that's just me. That's not how it actually works mechanically, but um, that's how I tend to think about it. So anyway, expect some playback with the barrels when you're charging it, and also these aren't going to charge at the same rate. They're both not directly connected to the keyless works. That's not how this gear train works. So let's talk a little bit about the gear train, how these are implemented in serial as opposed to parallel, and also how they've laid out the gear train on the SH-21, so one that's a little bit more modular, and so they can quickly use small seconds at six, which is something they do. As you can see, these all have the small seconds at six, but a lot of their SH-21s also have a center seconds. What's cool? is they're both actually there. So what we're looking at here are some pictures taken from the Christopher Ward website, and I will link to the pages below where these pictures and further text and content about SH-21 can be found. It goes in a lot more depth than I'm going to. I just want to give a brief overview. Now, one of these pictures on the screen should look familiar to the reverse of what we were just looking at with the actual watches. And that is the picture here in the lower left. And there are generally sort of two ways in which multiple barrels are constructed in a watch movement, parallel and serial. And parallel is what you see here in the top left. This is when, in parallel, two mainstream barrels are acting upon the second wheel, or what's also the minute wheel, simultaneously. And so what that means is that 
the power in the mainspring barrels has to be halved because you have double the pressure upon this center pinion. Now, the advantage of having parallel construction is that you can have a smaller movement because you don't have as much gearing since they both are directly interacting with the pinion, but it does have some, some drawbacks, which I won't go into depth on. But what you see in the SH-21 is this serial construction where you have two barrels that one of them is singularly driving the gear train. These are connected, they both provide power to the gear train, but in a serial manner as opposed to parallel. It's not at the same time, but sort of in series, in sequence. And I'll go a little bit more depth about that sequence, but it does add more gearing. So you get a little bit more height to a movement because you have, as you can see, extra gearing here on top that connects the two barrels so that they can be wound at the same time, but also so they can help provide power at the same time to the gear train. Okay, so for those of you that aren't familiar with watch terminology, I want to make note of a couple of things here as we look at this larger picture. There's a multi-wheel gear train, and think of the main spring barrel. So this has a spring wound up inside of it. When you wind the crown, it, it winds the spring tightly, and then it slowly unwinds, the gears move, and it sends power down the train. Now, they've got some notation in this visual. They're calling this the minute wheel, they're calling this the first wheel, and then we've got this second wheel. The way this is typically shown in any sort of like watch manuals documentation, again, think of the main spring barrel as wheel number one. This is usually wheel number two, the second wheel, which has the minute hand on the top of this arbor. So this is going to rotate once per hour. There's usually also an hour uh, wheel that sits on top of this with a reduction gear for the hour hand. So this is the second wheel. Then there's what they're noting is the first wheel. This is often though called the third wheel. It is going to essentially take its power from the second wheel, the minute wheel, and speed up that rotation so that when it contacts the pinion of what's often called the fourth wheel, they've got noted as the second wheel. This has the seconds hand on it usually. But the third wheel is going to speed up this rotation, so moving it from rotating once an hour to rotating it once a minute. So on the top of this arbor is going to be the minute hand and usually the hour hand with the reduction gear. And then on the top of this fourth wheel, what they've got noted as the second wheel, is going to be the second hand. And this will rotate once per minute. And then we have the escape wheel down here. So mainspring is going to send power down the train. Now, what's clever with the SH-21 design, and I'll use this visual here at the bottom right to show this. So what you see here in the center of this lower right visual is a sort of a typical setup, your standard central second hand. So you see that this fourth wheel, what they're calling the second wheel up here, but wheel number four with the, with the second on it is its center. So you have the mainspring, delivers power to the minute gear, which again, We'll often have the hour wheel and everything will be moved towards center. And then you have the third wheel connecting them. And then this is rotating once a minute. So this is sort of your more standard layout of the gear train that you might see on a mechanical movement. Now, a lot of movements, particularly ones I like, because I like the small seconds, move the seconds hand to six o'clock. Well, how do they move the center seconds hand to six o'clock? That's what you see over here on the left hand side of this three gear train layout graphic. So the way it's moved is it's basically just moving the wheels in the gear train and where they connect to each other and moving the, the pinions and the arbors and stuff along with it. So we have the mainspring barrel up here. We have the minute hand at center, third wheel connecting them, and then the second hand, the fourth wheel, is at six o'clock. And so the second hand would go on top of this, and then you have the minute and the hour up here. So it's basically just shifting these gears towards south, we'll call it, uh, so that we're moving the second hand, aka the fourth wheel, down here to sit just above six o'clock. What they've done with the SH-21 is sort of a clever solution, and you can see that here. Again, what they've got noted is the first wheel, often called the third wheel in, in other documents. They've basically sandwiched it. It's got two layers. And so what that means is these ratio gears, really what they are, are spinning quite fast, in, at least in, in relation to the minute wheel, to speed up the second hand rotation. 
And you can see here, there's one in contact at the center wheel pinion and also at the small seconds at six o'clock. So one of these is helping to rotate another pinion on top of the minute wheel arbor. And then there's also a layer of this that's contacting a pinion on the fourth wheel and rotating this also. So if you look down here in the lower right, you've got the main wheel, that is the, the, the main spring barrel. We have the minute wheel, second wheel at center. This will have both a minute and seconds hand on it, or could have if you wanted the seconds hand at center, which a lot of watches do. Then you have the sort of sandwiched third wheel here, one of these is going to be speeding up another um, pinion on top of the minute wheel for center seconds. Or if you want to have the seconds at six o'clock, then the other part of the third wheel is going to be rotating this at the seconds pinion at six o'clock on what we'll call the fourth wheel. So with the SH-21 layout, what's clever about this from a mechanical point of view is that whether you're creating a watch that's going to have the seconds hand at center or at six, your gear train doesn't need to be modified to do that. It's doing both. It's got the capability, it's already built in, that you can put the seconds hand at center, you can put the seconds hand at six. You already got the third wheel here that's rotating those pinions correctly, whether you put it at center or at six. So th this is a really clever um, implementation that allows modularity within a, a watch design to say, we're going to put it at center, we're going to put it at six, and you've got the capability both, and you're not moving gears around and changing the entirety of the movement just with a, a simple, well, I'll call it simple, but with a relatively, you know, straightforward complication like the seconds hand and not having to deal with the complexity of reshaping other th attributes, characteristics of the movement just to make that happen. So the SH-21 is of series construction with multiple mainstream barrels. They're working in sequence across the gear train and essentially providing support. These can be a full power as opposed to half power up here, which gives you a nice long power reserve. And then over here in the lower right, you can see that they've got this moved around so that they have a little bit of modularity with where they put the seconds hand when it comes to different variants of the movement and designs for their watch line. Now that we've talked the technical details, let's take a view of the quality of the dial making and design on these. Time for the pretty part. And I'm not going to take too long on each of them, but I want to at least give you up close looks. You can see the 12 and the marker at 12 are raised markers. This is a sandwich dial, so we've got loom sandwiched in a layer underneath of the top. You've got recessed power reserve and small seconds. Same with the date. I think I mentioned earlier that the date is loomed. You can see there's sort of a matte texture to the dial. Hands are tipped in white and then the minute hand has got red there at the top. Of course red tips on the power reserve and small seconds. We've got the applied marker at six as well. So a lot of textures and contrast here on the C8 power reserve. Got the turbine on the crown. And then we've got the twin barrels on the back that are designed to look like aircraft turbines. Has a winding direction stated in red, tells what ways that the turbine turns. Again, that's something that you'll see on actual turbines. As I said, each of the movements is serialized. So we've got SH-21, and you have a specific number in there. This is 4719, looks like. Specification information around the sides. Again, this black, white, red. This is black PVD, along with some stainless steel and sort of normal other materials, the jewels and whatnot. So that's the C8. Love that one. You want that aviation look. Now let's look at the C1. Again, this is sort of an opaline dial. Look how pretty that is up close. Just wonderful, clean, crisp dial. Again, it's sort of a matte, shimmering texture to it. So it's made not a lot of fluff on this particular dial. We've got these beautiful blued hands. Love those. 
Again, this one's not going to be the balance that not everyone will want, but this also has a slight curve to it. The dial. Very nicely printed markers. Just about as simple as you can get in terms of the design, but that simplicity is pretty, at least in my mind. This crown has the twin flag motif, which I showed a little bit ago. And I love the C1 case, which has transitions between polished and brushed. Just really catches the eye in a lot of ways. And then they've got a highly decorated bridge here as well. Information around the sides, close to the edge. Again, the double barrels holding that 120 hour power reserve. Again, they put a lot of time and energy into the bridges and the uh, reverse design on these to show off based on whatever style of watch. This is a dress watch and this is, looks like a very much a dress background. Sometimes the SH-21s are automatics and they'll have a rotor here as well and they highly decorate those. Just give you an idea of that slippage, as I mentioned, between first barrel and second barrel. We've talked about that in detail a little bit. So that's the small seconds. And last but not least, the C1 Arrow 8 Morgan chronometer. This has concentric circles on the dial, very subtle texture, which is beautiful. See the applied Morgan logo. There's a power reserve mixture of black, white, and red. Again, you can see the concentric circles there. Love this, you know, arrow eights. Like it's styled after one of the dashes of an arrow eight. Show you that picture. The hands, hour and minute are loomed a little bit. It's not really strong loom, but you see those concentric circles move over to the bezel on this, the edge of the dial. It's black. It's very subtle texture, but it's there. Crisp printing, where there is printing. And again, sort of layered dials, particularly the recessed sub dials. Beautifully done. That's the front. Again, I mentioned this has the Morgan logo on the crown. Again, the C1 case has these transitions between polished and brushed and just looks beautiful. And then we get another look at these twin barrels. It's just different than the others. This is a mixture of uh, black PVD around the edges and across the bridge. And then what has sort of a difference between polished and sort of sand or beat blasted look to it. There's the SH-21 number down there, all the other details about this specific model. And each of these is just like a, a class in design from motorsport to aviation with the turbines and you got the dress style. They're just each, you know, standalone. They're just beautiful. So that's the up close look at the SH-20. I also love the, the four case screws on the C1 case. One of the design features I really like. Okay, so that's the up close look. Thanks for joining me on this little journey. A couple things to say, we'll be done. Well, I hope you enjoyed this semi-technical and design-oriented uh, video on the SH-21 movement from Christopher Ward and the three examples we looked at. They're just wonderful watches, the wonderful movements in their design and decoration, and I just love having them in my collection. I highly recommend them. And again, for the price, it's hard to beat getting an in-house caliber that's got a 120 hour, five day power reserve, COSC certified chronometer for generally under $2,000. I mean, you're not gonna find that in almost any other brand out there on the market. So highly recommend. Thanks Chris Reward for all of the work you do putting into these watches. I enjoy wearing them and highly recommend them. I'm Brian, this is Watch Complications and I'll see you in the next video.